Hello everyone this is part 5 of what if Naruto was sealed because he was too powerful, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. since Naruto's performance at the stadium against all of the genin. Soon it let him be for the time being because he deserved the rest. That was one reason, the other reason was that she wouldn't have him doing any more D-rank missions with Team 7, and they couldn't go on them anyway seeing as how Naruto had put Sasuke Uchiha on the shelf with the butchering job he had done on Sasuke's arm. This was part of the arrangement made between Sunid and Kakashi. Naruto was no longer considered a member of Team 7. It was a good idea, with Naruto having just destroyed Sasuke and Sakura in combat almost effortlessly, the team dynamics, what little there were in the first place, would have been screwed. She proposed to have him go solo and float between teams, either more experienced teams of Chunin and Junin to get field experience, or the younger Genin teams to give him some experience in leading teams. This actually kind of worked out in Naruto's favor. For all of his want to get promoted the fact was that while he was in NE he was used primarily for solo missions, things that only had him worrying about his own back and what he had to do to survive. This would allow him to learn how to fight in conjunction with others. He needed to learn how to work in a team and how to keep his comrades alive when they were with him. He couldn't argue that he wasn't ready to lead a squad of ninja as a junin yet, he knew that. So on the morning that our story picks up from Naruto ambled his way through the streets of Kanoa on his way to the Hokage Tower to get himself a mission. The looks he ended up getting from the civilians on his usual path were the usual looks of apathy and sneers that he usually got, but when Naruto turned his own eyes onto them they turned away from him. Naruto sighed as he drew closer to the tower. Upon entering he made his way to the office of Sunid, which was filled with the other Kanoa genin he had fought, minus Sasuke, all of their Junin sensei, and the genin team from Sunagaku. Naruto raised an eyebrow at all of the people in the room. He looked at Sunid, so what do you got for me today Bar chan Sunid threw the paperweight on her desk at Naruto who just ducked it with a smirk. She narrowed her eyes at him, disrespectful brat, I called you here so that you could begin getting to work helping out with the surplus of missions that we have. She looked at all of the genin in the room, things are still kind of shaky after the invasion but we can't turn away any of the work that comes into us. Not only is the money necessary, but we need to keep up with the view that we are strong, so genin like all of you will be getting higher rank missions more often. Sunid motioned for Naruto to come forward, you will start off with your Chunin duties today. You will be leading one of these teams on a C-rank mission today. Seeing as you will be the highest ranked member on whatever squad you end up taking you will be the leader. Naruto pointed at the Sunid Genin, so why are they here? And can I pick them? Sunid nodded, you can pick them if that's what you want. Though they aren't really a team for a mission, more like they are the mission. Naruto thought to himself for a moment, okay, I'll go with the Suna kids. I don't really feel like fighting bandits or something right now anyway so whatever I'm doing with them I'll take that one. He turned to face them and motioned for them to follow him closer to the desk before he stopped in front of Sunid, so what's the mission? Sunid handed him a scroll from the C-rank pile, the main reason that the Kazekage's children have been in Kanoa for so long has been mostly as some sort of collateral while we begin talks for the treaty between our villages. Negotiations are firmly underway so we are returning them to their village. You will escort them there and wait for Suna to finalize the treaty on their own side before you return with a scroll from them. He looked at her in confusion, this is C-ranked. Are you serious? It should at least be B.O. Well whatever, Naruto scratched his head, so do I get a team for this or what? Sunid shook her head, Naruto they are a team. You plus them should be a match for pretty much anything that could attack you between here and there. Sunid tossed Naruto a scroll that he caught wordlessly. Flying solo, okay I guess. Naruto pocketed the scroll and turned to his selected team, all right, do you guys have everything you need for the mission or do we need to square away some time to get you restocked before we leave? The siblings traded looks as Temari spoke up, we're ready to go whenever you are. When do we go Naruto-san? Naruto cringed when she said his name, ah, uh, just Naruto is fine Temari, I'm not much for the honorifics. 
he scratched his head nervously, all right if you guys are all ready to go then let's head on out, no sense in wasting time. I'm sure you're all sick of staying here. As the other teams lined up to get their own assignments Naruto lead the Suna contingent out of the office and out towards the street. On their way out of the village Naruto found that while the civilians didn't particularly like him due to his thorough dissection of the entire slew of Genin the other day, the ninja higher in rank gave him some respect for it. As he walked towards the target gate he got nods of acknowledgement from the Chunin he found out on patrol, the Junin out with their Genin teams or just some of the ninja out in general. As he made his way to the western gate the perennial gatekeepers, Izumo and Kotetsu, got grins on their faces upon seeing Naruto and company make their way to the gate. Naruto walked up and revealed the mission scroll given to him by Sunid, Chunin Naruto Uzumaki with a mission to Sunagaku alongside the Kazekage's children. Kotetsu nodded and marked it down on the traffic ledger. The bandage-nosed shinobi chiddingly elbowed Naruto, hey kid, good stuff the other day at the stadium. You pretty much sleepwalked through all of those kids. Naruto shrugged as he wrote down his own signature on the page, well we couldn't use killing force on each other, I guess they were all holding back too, but they shouldn't have. Kami knows Sasuke didn't, for all of the good it did him. Naruto handed the papers back to the two Chunin and called for the Suna Genin to leave with him. As the two Chunin watched him walk away from the village Izumo chuckled, that kid's going to get promoted before us at this rate. Kotetsu yawned as he went back inside their booth, I don't really mind too much. Let a kid with some ambition move up in rank, I'll be fine right here. Izumo sweat dropped in response to his partner's comment, so does that mean that you want to watch a gate for the rest of your career? You are one lazy bastard. Kotetsu gave a small smirk, hey, it beats actually working for a living doesn't it? Due to the fact that everyone here was an active ninja, they took to jumping through the trees as their method of travel. Naruto, being bored as all get out, decided to make some small talk as they made their way out of the country, so how'd Kanoa treat you guys? You all look fine if you ask me. Kankuro grumbled somewhat, we wouldn't have had to stay at all if someone didn't jump us after the fight with Gara. Naruto let a smirk play on his lips, well I told you all exactly what I was going to do. You weren't going to just leave so I had to knock you all out. It's not my fault that you didn't watch your backs. Kankuro still kept his eyes narrowed at him, I still can't believe we lost so easily. You just clubbed us over the back of the head without us even noticing. Grinning back at the paint-wearing ninja, Naruto responded, I am very sneaky sir. He dropped the grin from his face, how far is it to Suna? I've never been before. This was a lie. He had been to Suna before, but he really wanted to cover up the stuff he did in any around the people that didn't need to know about it unless the knowledge was necessary. Temari moved closer in their formation to speak to him, from Kanoa, Suna is about three days away if we keep at this speed. Naruto nodded and turned to face them, all right, we'll go for as long as you can all stand to travel. Don't worry about me, just yourselves, I might be capable of getting all the way to Suna without sleep myself. Kankuro and Temari blinked blankly at that. Gara didn't have energy to burn like that. Though this kid did beat Gara in his full transformation after all, it couldn't really be that far-fetched. Kankuro glanced back at Gara and whispered to Naruto, hey, Gara says that you're like him. What exactly does that mean? Naruto looked back at him in a nonchalant manner, oh that. I have a biju sealed inside of me like him. Naruto took not of the looks of shock on their faces, minus Gara. what? Did he not elaborate on what he meant when he said that? The two stunned siblings shook their heads. Tamari looked back at Gara, who nodded in affirmation. She looked up at Naruto in confusion, wait. Why don't you have any powers or transformations like Gara? We probably wouldn't have even known if you two hadn't said anything. The blonde boy shrugged, I don't know. I can do some stuff with its chakra, but I don't really have any transformations or anything really scary like Gara does to my knowledge. He then added under his breath, unless you count the trigger. Kankuro put his nerves behind him, this kid isn't like Gara. He won't flat out kill us for no reason. Stop being so scared of him, he's just like me or Temari. So, which one do you have if I could ask? You know that Gara has the Ichibi no Shukaku. Oh I have the Kubi no Yoko in me. Naruto grinned at him all cheekily, but you shouldn't go around spreading that. It's an S-class secret in my village, no one my age knows about it. 
if you do I might just have to pop up and kill you, no big deal. The mirth in his voice couldn't indicate if he was joking about that or not. The silence brought on by Naruto's proclamation was broken by Gara of all people, how did you not end up like me? Naruto looked at Gara dead in his eyes and saw that he was genuinely curious about it. Well, first of all I ended up making contact with the QB personally and hammering out a contract of sorts between us. It can't possess me, I can use its chakra when I need to, I let it see, hear, and feel what I do, there's other stuff too but that is some of the big stuff. Gara blinked, I've never tried that before. Shukaku kind of just runs rampant in my mind. Even now it wants me to kill you to get even. Naruto grinned at him, I'm so glad you've thought better of trying that. Yeah, the contract wasn't my idea though, it was someone else's. And you say you can't even get into your head safely to make contact without Shukaku fighting for control. Your seal must suck. The siblings all looked at each other before Temari spoke up, you know about seals. No. Naruto shook his head in the negative, but I was sealed by the Yondime Hockage, who was the best. If I haven't heard of who did yours then they must not be nearly as good. He then scratched his chin, that might be something to learn though. He got a serious look on his face, but in all seriousness, don't go around telling people that I contain the QB. I have enough crap to deal with at home with just the adults knowing. If the kids my age are going to know, I'm going to tell them my damn self so that no one can warp their opinions. I was supposed to be a weapon like Gara, but I ended up getting out of it somehow. Gara's curiosity was piqued further by Naruto's words, you got out of it. What do you mean? Naruto rubbed his head sheepishly, well I was used for serious stuff, a lot of cloak and dagger operations, until four years ago when I ended up getting caught. The ones that discovered me ended up doing something to make me into that daft, loud, orange-wearing kid that you met at first. Fighting Gara pulled my old killer instinct out, I thank you for that, and here we are now. Kankuro raised an eyebrow, you don't seem too much like a weapon to me. His sister nodded in response, you just seem like a really strong ninja, a kid. Naruto wagged his eyebrows at her, I'm a sentient weapon you could say. I don't like being all dreary when I don't have to be. When we're like this, no real fighting going on, I can be normal, well as normal as a ninja like me can be anyway. When the fighting starts I can just turn on the side of me that's a killer, it's kind of weird to explain. Gara looked at Naruto, your teammate, the way you fought him in the stadium, I thought he was precious to you. You said you got strength from defending others and yet you had no problems hurting him. Chuckles came from Naruto as he contemplated Gara's comment, well, maybe, but I don't really like him so it doesn't really count that much. What I told you was true, but it was more like for the whole village than just my team, I don't even like my team. You don't like your team. Temari looked at him as if he was crazy, then why are you on it? Why not get switched out? Naruto smiled, well seeing as how I'm currently doing this it works out for me. Honestly, working with you guys so far has been more pleasant than my entire time on Team 7. No brooding spoiled pretty boy breathing down my neck, no sensei that would rather read than pay attention to what's going on, and no pink-haired fangirl with bipolar syndrome and a hair trigger right hand. Yep, Temari-chan here is way more pleasant to be around as far as female company goes. Temari blushed while Kankuro snorted, yeah sure kid. Just trade the hair color and the fist for a giant metal fan and you've got Temari. The girl in question looked back at her younger brother while clutching the fan on her back tightly, what was that Kankuro? Could you repeat that for me? Kankuro rapidly shook his head while Naruto barked out a laugh, see, at least she gave you a warning. I usually didn't get those before Sakura tried to wail on me. Naruto noticed that Gara had been staring at him for quite a while, what's wrong Gara? Do you need something? Gara kept his eyes on Naruto, you are a very strange person Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto grinned foxily at him, well I don't think you can talk, calling me strange. You look like you want to say something though. Gara's eyes turned back ahead as he broke eye contact with Naruto, it is nothing Uzumaki. Naruto didn't believe him but let it slide as he kept his group jumping through the trees, if nothing else we should reach near the border before it gets too dark to proceed any further. A group of nods and his focus was on the direction. As the day winded to a close in Konohagakur, Sunid was still at her desk, 
going through the most unnecessary necessity the every cage was stuck doing, of course I'm talking about paperwork. A knock at her door soon revealed Shizun, Sunad Sama, Kakashi is here to see you. Sunad sighed, send him in. She flexed her wrist and hissed, damn brat dragging me back here. I bet he just wanted to punish me with all of this writing on so many of these useless forms to cramp my wrist so I can't hit him anymore. Honestly, shouldn't I have an entire team of secretaries to handle all of the mundane crap? I am the hockage after all. Shizun blinked, note to self, find out if I actually should be looking for secretaries for things like that. A yell of her name from Sunid brought the black-haired girl back to earth, oh, um, I'm sending Kakashi in now okay. Sunid motioned with her hand and Shizun disappeared from the door, Kakashi appearing in her stead, with Sakura in tow. As they entered the room Kakashi stood in front of Sunid's desk, Hokage Sama, you wanted to speak to me personally about Team 7. Sunid nodded, yes, due to Naruto's promotion and as a part of the arrangement made in case he won the entire series of bouts against the Genin I'm taking him off of Team 7 effective immediately. Kakashi's visible eye went wide, Hokage Sama, I'm aware that Naruto needs to work with others because of his new rank and everything, but why take him off of Team 7 completely? Sunid shook her head, it's nothing that you've done Kakashi. It's more along the lines of the team itself. She placed her chin on her hands, do you really think that after the little show that Naruto and the Yuchi have put on in the stadium things will ever be civil again? The look on Kakashi's face showed his faith in the matter, Naruto has shown growth in maturity in leaps and bounds ever since the Chunin exam, I honestly believe that he can coexist with Sasuke and Sakura. A smirk appeared on the face of the buxom Hokage, Kakashi awarded that like it was Naruto who got smacked around the stadium. Just as quickly as it appeared her smirk vanished, Sasuke was soundly beaten by Naruto, driven to the point that he felt the activation of Orochimaru's cursed seal was tolerable. You did warn him not to do so did you not? Kakashi nodded, yes, I have, along with using the Chidori against comrades, but it seems he disregarded both. Sakura felt very small all of a sudden as she saw Sunid speaking with her sensei, as if she was out of place, and indeed she was. She wasn't even leaping to Sasuke's defense or anything until the Chidori was brought up, but sensei, I saw Sasuke-kun's arm. Sasuke may have tried to use Chidori, but what about Naruto? He did something to mangle Sasuke-kun's arm. Kakashi spoke up quickly before Sunid could, Sakura, the Chidori is an assassination technique used for only one thing, to kill. Sasuke, by using that, was saying that he had no qualms against killing Naruto. Naruto simply channeled elemental wind chakra to his blade and cut through the Chidori. With that kind of attack, if he really wanted to, Naruto could have cleaved Sasuke in two whenever he wanted if Sasuke was using Chidori. He fought to simply subdue, Sasuke was going for Naruto's life. Chiming in at that point was Sunid, Sasuke will heal within the next few weeks. Naruto didn't do anything permanent, but with him activating the Cursed Seal I have to ask that you remain on simply D-ranked missions for the time being until I can get Jiraiya to look at it himself again, he left right after Naruto's matches and it will take some time to contact him again. Kakashi nodded, yes Sunid Sama. What about Team 7? Sunid sighed and turned towards the window, well with what has happened I can't in good mind allow Naruto back onto your squad, at least not so soon. I'll find you a replacement in the meantime and by the time Jiraiya gets here you should have someone for your team. Kakashi nodded, of course. That was all I wished to speak about Sunid Sama. Come on Sakura. The masked Junin led his female student out of the office. As they walked out of the tower Sakura spoke up, what about Naruto Kakashi Sensei? He isn't on the team anymore. Kakashi looked at the setting sun, no I'm afraid he isn't. If he was then he would be the superior officer to you and Sasuke and Sasuke would never accept that. His superiority complex would force him to fight any decision that Naruto would make in the field and hamper team effectiveness, and that's not even adding on to the fact that he would probably try to fight Naruto himself if he got the opportunity. No, this is for the best in this instance. Back on the trail to Suna it was nightfall and Naruto halted progress for the evening to allow the others to rest. While sending out a clone to gather fish Naruto had started a fire and had boiled some water for a few instant ramen cups. Hey, why not? While everyone ate they all sat around the fire until finishing the meal. He looked at the siblings and tried talking to them again, so what happened to your sensei, the guy with the veil on his face? 
We didn't kill him, did we? Tamari shook her head. Baki sensei returned to Suna after the invasion failed. He was the one that found that our fath, the Kazekage, was killed before the invasion ever even happened. Naruto looked at the others and found that neither Kankuro nor Gara had much emotion about the matter, so what happened if you don't mind me asking? Kankuro answered him, Orokimaru had infiltrated our village and had been masquerading as the Kazekage for quite a while before the invasion. Naruto threw his ramen cup to the side, I knew about the invasion. I knew about the plan for Gara and everything. Orokimaru had his shit planned for years. Kankuro scoffed at that, well if you knew then why didn't you stop it or something? The grinning Chunin unnerved him, that's another secret that's even deeper than the whole QB thing. I will say that it's half of the reason that I ended up a loudmouth when the Chunin exam started, again I can't say thank you enough to Gara for snapping me out of it. This confused Gara as to why he was being thanked, why thank me Uzumaki. I tried to kill you and destroy your village. I don't understand. Naruto shook his chopsticks at Gara chiddingly before throwing them into the fire, but you didn't kill me or destroy anything did you? All you ended up doing was giving me my fighter IQ back. That's why I'm grateful, because if you didn't do that who knows how I might have ended up, I mean did you see me beforehand? Naruto shivered, it gives me the creeps just thinking about it sometimes. That brought a round of laughs from the siblings minus Gara. Tamari was still curious about some things though, Naruto. You say you're a host like Gara. Well how were you treated? Gara had assassins after him since he was six years old. Naruto thought to himself for a moment before speaking, well it was kind of like him, minus the assassinations for the most part. It was mostly people treating me like crap until I up and disappeared for a while, I just stopped caring for a while and stayed out of public. When I got older nothing really changed, even now I'm just now starting to get some respect in Kanoa. Gara looked at him, how did you take it? His blonde fellow container shrugged, I had a few ways. First of all, like I said I just stayed out of public. Another reason is because I was always busy. When I was a kid I always had something to do to occupy my time. The last reason is because eventually some people actually started treating me like a real person, that was probably a big reason why. Naruto looked up at the moon, being acknowledged positively for being you is a powerful thing. When the people around you are just glad that you're alive, there's just something about that that just doesn't compare to most other things, guys like me and Gara can relate to that. He lowered his head and noticed that all three siblings were giving him their undivided attention. Sweat dropping because he really had nothing else to say Naruto stood up, well, you can all get some sleep. I'll stay up and keep watch first. Gara blocked Naruto's way with his sand, Uzumaki I will keep watch for the night. I cannot sleep anyway so it isn't inconvenient to me. Naruto looked at Gara and smiled at him, sure thing Gara, thanks a lot then. Alright, I'm going to go drain the lizard before I go to sleep. I'll be back in a flash. As Naruto walked away and Gara left to find an area suitable for watching over the campsite for the night Kankuro and Temari were stunned. Kankuro looked at Gara walking away, did Gara just volunteer for night watch? He never did that before. Temari watched the direction Naruto went off in, I think it has to do with that Naruto guy. Gara's been like this ever since he fought him remember. He hasn't tried to or talked about killing anyone since then. As she watched him return to camp and pull out his sleeping things she was more curious about the blonde Kanoa ninja that had somehow calmed Gara. The next couple of days found the group traveling from the woods to the desert with almost alarming transfer of landscape. The trip was pretty uneventful, with the exception of some dumb bandits that thought it would be a good idea to attack a group of ninjas. They took this opportunity to let Gara let off some steam in the form of eradicating the lot of them in a wave of sand. Poor bastards never had a chance. As they traveled they kept up the same routine as usual with Naruto trying to engage them in conversations to get to know them better. With Kankuro he pretty much let slide their introduction back before the Chunin exams and started off fresh. It didn't really take long for them to start hitting it off. Kankuro had a strange sense of humor and when coupled with Naruto's dry wit and penchant for picking with people like Gara, usually ending up with him getting thrown by an arm of sand by Gara, much to Kankuro and strangely Gara's amusement. Naruto took the time traveling with them to also flirt shamelessly with Temari. 
At first he simply took to answering her questions about how he lived and what he was used to doing as a ninja and asking her the same in turn, but that soon turned to him sidling up to her during breaks and randomly commenting on her good looks and how he'd like to take her to some place called Ichiraku whenever she came back to Kanoa during their travels. She didn't use her fan to brain him for two reasons, because he did beat Gara and then still had enough energy to capture them and jump into the fray of the invasion so she didn't really feel like trying to incur his wrath, the other reason was because on the occasions she did try to swing at him he dodged and then made comments on how he liked strong girls. Kankuro got a few laughs off of that, right until Temari realized that hitting Kankuro with her fan was no trouble at all. Naruto even got Gara to talk sometimes, not very often, but he still got him to speak and that was something. He usually compared Biju with Gara, and inwardly bitched to QB about why the hell he couldn't get a cool defense like Gara had, he was sick of getting his ass kicked, anyway the point is, Naruto was quickly getting close to the Suna Genin, the fact that he didn't rub the fact that he beat them in their faces helped exponentially. And now they were traveling through the desert, edging ever closer to Sunagaku. The setting sun was actually doing very little to soothe the heat on one blonde-haired ninja. Naruto wiped his brow once again under the hot sun, Kami, this desert, why the fuck would people live somewhere so hot? This is ridiculous. Naruto looked back at the Suna kids who were smirking at his discomfort, I'll bet you're all loving this right now aren't you? Kankuro snorted as he stifled his laughter, yeah definitely. You can run through three teams of genin like a hot knife through butter but a little heat and humidity and you can't take it. Naruto gave him a half-hearted glare, watch it makeup boy. I'm really irritable out in this stupid heat. Kankuro growled at him, it's not makeup damn it. It's war paint that. Naruto rolled his eyes, that you steal from your super hot sister. Kankuro finished his sentence, that I steal from my super hot sister. Kankuro blinked and retracted his statement, no. Wait. Take all of that back. A grinning Naruto looked at the puppeteer, what? The, you steal makeup part, or the, your sister is super hot part? Both. My sister isn't hot. Kankuro felt a glare from behind him from Temari and deadpanned a look at Naruto, ugh, damn you kid. Naruto chuckled and decided to save Kankuro from his fate, yo Temari-chan, how close to sooner are we? I'm kind of on blind autopilot up here. Temari lowered her ill intent towards Kankuro and looked over at the leader of the makeshift squad, we should be right on top of the village any minute now. Right on cue as they reached the top of a dune a massive dome-esque structure came into view, and here we are. Naruto let the others take the lead from this point on as fighting a slew of pissed off foreign ninja due to a misunderstanding didn't really appeal to him at the moment. As they arrived at the opening he noticed the faint glares from the guards and rolled his eyes, woohoo, trading one village's glares for another, and I can't even kick anyone's ass here or I'll start a war. They made their way into the city leading Naruto along. Kankuro turned to get his attention, hey, the first thing we should do is let Baki-sensei know we made it back. I'll go find him, you can go with Temari and Gara to our house until I get sensei. Naruto shrugged, as the fact that there currently was no Kazekage meant that he couldn't really go straight to his office and give him the information on the treaty, and the council wasn't just going to be called at the drop of a hat for something that wasn't an emergency. He decided that waiting was cool. The blonde foreigner nodded and followed Gara and Temari as they made their way through Sunagaku to their home. Naruto eventually ignored the reaction that the citizens of Suna were having towards a Kanoa shinobi in their village and took to a pastime that could draw his attention for the remainder of the trip, but watch Temari walk and not get caught, game. He had to admit, Jiraiya did teach him something useful besides raising gun on their search for Sunid. The ever useful advice from the super pervert was, when caught peeking at a girl in the street do not look away as if you weren't looking at her, make eye contact instead. Usually guys like Naruto and himself would end up staring at girls that were kunoiki, a side effect of living in a ninja village, and they could sense when they were being watched, lying like you weren't looking makes it worse, but letting her know you were looking, just not letting her know what exactly you were looking at is a very good way to get your looks in, and Naruto, being an old hand in espionage under Danzo had a killer poker face. Tamari could tell he was looking at her, but the fact that whenever she looked back at him to call him a pervert he was already looking into her eyes ended up silencing her and making her quite flustered at his serious gaze. Naruto wasn't a pervert. He just had a healthy respect for the female condition. He was a growing young man just like anyone else, so what? 
eventually that had to come to an end as they all arrived at the house of their family, and by house I mean Big Ass Mansion. Naruto whistled as he walked through the gates and looked at the massive structure. It was the same color as all of the other desert buildings in Suna, it was just the biggest damn house out of all of them by far, this is your house. You guys have got a big ass house. Tamari smirked as they made their way inside, we are the children of the Yondime Kazekage. Where did you think we lived? Come on and let's find you a room. As they traveled to the upper level of the mansion Naruto was confused, wait, I thought I would end up getting a hotel or something when I got here. I don't want to impose on you guys like this, it isn't really fair. Tamari rolled her eyes while Gara just stared at him, Uzumaki I insist that you stay here. I won't accept anything else. Gara then left Naruto and Temari in the hall alone. Naruto turned to his fellow blonde and pointed off in the direction that Gara went, did he just try to be nice and tell me he was cool with me staying here? Tamari nodded as she kept leading him down the hall, even when Naruto asked why, it's because of what you did. I think he likes talking with you, it didn't really happen much before he met you, I think he's spoken to you more than anyone else in this village. I'm okay with it too I guess. Why? Naruto was looking around and realized this place was too rich for his blood, I did kind of get you all captured and all of that other stuff you know. Tamari waved off his excuse, it was your job. I'm just glad you didn't kill us or anything, it was an invasion after all. Naruto grinned at her, I would never. Killing such a beautiful thing like you would have been madness for me to get over after the deed was done. Naruto once again ducked a swing of her fan that surprisingly didn't break anything in the hallway when she missed. Tamari placed the fan on her back again with the faint traces of a blush on her face. She honestly wasn't used to being flirted with at all. The entire time before this everyone had been too afraid of Gara to even attempt to get close to her. And out of the blue here comes this kid that not only has the gall to try it, but who doesn't fear Gara because he'd already beaten Gara cleanly once before. She had to admit, it was kind of nice for a boy to talk about her like that, and it wasn't like he was bad looking. After ditching the orange jumpsuit he was far better looking than before and the mysterious scar on his face didn't detract from said looks at all. They came to a stop in front of a door that Temari opened for him, this will be your room for your stay. Naruto went inside and had to do a complete spin to fully take in the aesthetics of the room, this is my room. This is probably as big as my entire damn apartment. Does this room have its own bathroom? What the hell do you guys do with all of this space? Temari had a humid smile on her lips, we're rich so, anything we want would be the correct answer to your question. Naruto chuckled and began setting his things by the bed, the rest of us are down the hall. If you need something our rooms aren't that hard to find. Naruto nodded, okay, I guess I'll just go to sleep tonight and worry about other stuff in the morning, like the scroll and all of that. No one will probably even get into gear about this until then anyway. Okay, Kankuro or I will help you with that tomorrow. She watched as he walked into the bathroom and began splashing his face with water from the sink, good night then Naruto. He heard her and yelled out from the bathroom, good night Temari-chan. As the sounds of her shutting the door rang out through the room Naruto sighed and shut off the water before returning to flop on the bed. As Temari walked through the hall to reach her own room she had to giggle when a familiar voice rang out shortly after she shut his door, oh Kami, even their beds crap all over mine. This mission is awesome. The next day Naruto met up with the Suna council that, surprisingly, showed him more respect than he had received anywhere prior to this, however he chalked it up more to the fact that he was something of an ambassador in this case. After that meeting, which mostly consisted of him sitting and listening to the old men bicker over how this should be taken, Baki assured him he wouldn't have to sit through something like that for the rest of his time in Suna which brought a laugh from the boy. He and Baki eventually met up with Temari, Kankuro, and Gara at a training ground and found Temari obliterating the desert scape. It was then that he was blindsided with a request from the fan-wielding girl. Naruto blinked incredulously, you want me to what? Temari leaned against her fan staring Naruto down, I want to fight you, so come on. Naruto kept blinking at her, you against me. Really? Why would you want to fight me? She huffed at him and began to walk up on him to poke him in the chest, I saw you using Wind Chakra and Fuyutan Jutsu back in Kanoa. I use them too and I want to see who is better, me or you. Naruto looked to the others for help but only saw Baki and Kankuro looking anywhere but at him, Temari-chan, I'm not much for the casual sparring. 
when I spar, people get hurt, and my jutsu aren't really the probing type, I only have two jutsu right now that don't have the potential to kill you. Damari glared at him, so you think I can't take it? Alright, now we're definitely fighting. Get ready Naruto. Naruto sighed and backed up to set down in a stance, someone call this. Baki walked forward, the fight will end when I say or when one of you surrenders. Ready. He got nods from both Naruto and Temari, Hajime. Temari wasted no time and whipped her fan out to send a massive gust at Naruto. Naruto immediately went on the move and tried closing the distance, but was forced to go serpentine in his movements so that he wasn't lifted clear off of the ground. Naruto drew closer and saw Temari swing her fan at him in an effort to end the fight. Naruto brandished his sword and blocked, sliding slightly through the sand until he gained some footing. As she pushed against his sword she realized that he wasn't budging, why are you so strong? Naruto grinned at her, because it's more useful than being weak. Naruto pulled his sword away and caught her fan in one hand while sheathing his sword in the other. Damari was marveling at the raw strength it took to hold her back. This moment of all came back to bite her as Naruto swiftly disarmed her by grabbing onto her fan with both hands and swinging away with it to throw her off. As she slid through the sand and regained a standing position she saw Naruto holding onto her fan, looking at her blankly, you want to give up. I'm really not in a fighting mood right now. Tamari gritted her teeth in anger, stop underestimating me. She then charged in and tried her hand up close against him. Naruto sighed and threw the fan aside as the sandy blonde girl got ever closer. Tamari threw a series of punches that Naruto swiftly swatted aside, however he didn't want to counter and injure her so he stayed on the strictly defensive. Tamari was getting progressively angrier at her inability to injure Naruto, apparently the guy that had been hitting on her for three days and the guy that she was currently in conflict with actually did exist in the same body at the same time. Seeing that during the short skirmish she had gotten her back to her fan she broke off and picked it up, unfurling it with a smirk, now what are you going to do? Naruto pointed at her fan, you're going to be dead in like five seconds, just so you know. She looked at her fan to see a slow burning explosive note attached to it and hurriedly threw it away just in time to see a small puff go off on her fan. As she turned back to Naruto she had no time to react before she was on her back looking up at the sky with a kunai at her throat. She blinked and realized Naruto was pinning her down with a kunai at her throat, but, what? Naruto looked at Baki who announced his victory and he helped her up. She dusted herself off and went to retrieve her fan, it was a dud. Naruto nodded, well yeah, did you really think I was going to blow you and your fan up just for a spa? He took her fan and dusted off the soot from his note before handing it back. Tamari snatched it back heatedly and placed it on her back, you completely destroyed me, I never had a chance. She clinched her fists, I'm weaker than I thought I was. Naruto shook his head as they met back up with the others, it's not that you're weak, it's that I'm not a genin, hell I shouldn't even be a chunin. You're chunin level from what I saw during the exams, but I'm a hard guy to fight. Kankuro patted Temari on the shoulder, I told you it wouldn't have been a good idea to fight him, why do you think I didn't? Temari glared at him, because you're a lazy bastard maybe. Kankuro frowned, no, this guy beat Gara. we didn't have a chance against him, not yet anyway. I want to try, but I know that I'll lose if I do so there's no need. Naruto scratched his head and tried to walk away, this is why I didn't want to spar. No matter how I handled it I was going to hurt your feelings and I didn't want to do that. He turned back momentarily, I like hanging out with you guys. The idea of me doing nothing but spending time with Junin and other adults just because I can fight doesn't really work for me, so I don't want to squash everyone in my age group and make them feel inferior, but it's the only way I know how to train or fight, full blast. He gestured to the training ground, even when I hold back it ends up like that. Turning back towards town he waved back, I'll get my stuff out tonight and get a room somewhere, my business here should be done within the week. He shunshined away, leaving Team Baki out on the training grounds in his wake. Roughly 30 minutes later, Naruto shut the door to the mansion to leave just in time for Temari to grab him and drag him back inside by the back of his shirt. Kankuro and Baki sweat dropped at her display and went about their business. Temari dragged Naruto up the stairs and back into his guest room before finally dropping him. Naruto stood up and shook himself off, any particular reason you just dragged me through your house like I was your battle fan. 
Temari crossed her arms and sat on his bed, you're not leaving like that. Not because of a simple spa. A quirked eyebrow from Naruto let her know his mindset on it, you were just pissed off at me about the fight and you still want me here. Temari rolled her eyes, der Naruto. I was mad, yes, but I had just lost decisively. What? Was I supposed to be happy that you kicked my ass? That's not a reason to want to kick you out, that would be petty, especially since I was the one that made you fight. Her eyes narrowed however, but you did humiliate me out there and you owe me for that. Naruto gripped his hair, humiliated you. Who else saw it but your team and me? Her eyes softened after that as she looked at him with a smile, you owe me, and you're taking me out tonight. She stood and walked over to him, looking him in the eyes, nothing big, just to get something to eat, but you will be paying. She walked out of his room but reappeared at the doorway, but it's not a date. With that she left him alone in the room. Naruto chuckled to himself, now that's my kind of girl. I kick her ass and then she wants to date me because of it. That night Naruto had asked her where she wanted to go and she ended up choosing a simple diner, nothing expensive or anything, it was kind or spur of the moment. The meal was spent with the two of them continuing to talk about their ninja lives. Tamari had a good time learning about the strange blonde and he simply had a blast enjoying the company of a girl that seemingly wanted to spend some time with him. Tamari folded her hands and set her chin on him, I watched the last couple of fights that you had. For some reason you really had it out for the Uchiha boy. What was that all about by the way? Naruto had set down the money for their meal on the check, I hate Oto Shinobi, so much. Long story short, they were the ones that gave me the scar on my face among other things. I dislike them immensely, and Orokimaru's cronies with those damn seals on their bodies are the ones I hate the most. He paused to calm himself down, I didn't really like Sasuke that much anyway. There was always some kind of underlying animosity, but seeing him, actually using that damn thing pissed me off so much, I couldn't take it. Naruto looked at her with a smirk on his face, who uses something that an infamous s rank nuke nin with crimes against humanity on him gives him anyway. That really isn't the smartest thing you could do. Tamari laughed slightly, true. I thought he was a genius wasn't he? Naruto laughed in return, yeah I guess, but they throw that term around a lot in Kanoa, I swear. Every year another, genius, ends up rolling out of the academy and gets pegged as the second coming of the Yondime Hokage or something. It's ridiculous. Tamari had a smile on her face as their check and cash were taken by the waitress, well what about you? What does that make you? You're way better than anyone our age that I've ever met. Naruto shrugged in his seat, I wouldn't call myself a genius that's for sure. I actually had to train my ass off to get what I've got, and I'm still nowhere where I should be. There are some dangerous people out in the world, and I've made some powerful enemies that I still need to prepare for. Tamari put her hand on his and smiled at him, well I know you'll be ready when the time comes to fight. You're a strong person Naruto. Naruto smiled back at her, thank you Tamari chan That means a lot to me. After a short walk around the night lit village Naruto escorted the girl to her bedroom door and bid her good night, even getting a kiss on the cheek for his chivalry. Naruto smirked all the way back to his room where he sensed someone's presence. Flipping his lights on, he saw the youngest member of the household standing in the corner of the room waiting, Uzumaki. Naruto got over his surprise and returned the greeting, Hello Gara. What are you doing in here? What's up? Gara stayed in his place as his eyes stuck on Naruto, how was your evening with my sister? Naruto felt the sweat roll down his back at the intent of Gara's tone. He may have beaten him once before, but last time they weren't fighting in a desert either so he didn't really feel like scrapping with him again, ah it was great. Tamari chan is awesome, we had a good time. Gara nodded and made his way out of the room, very good. And Uzumaki, if you hurt my sister I will kill you. Not Shukaku, me. Naruto blinked as Gara's presence left before a door down the hall shut, did Gara just pull the protective brother card on me? Naruto shook his head and started getting ready for bed, this mission is weird. The next day Naruto received the scroll from the council, with their offers to Kanoa for a treaty. With the bulk of his mission completed, Naruto bid each of the siblings goodbye at the gate. He shook Gara's hand, bumped fists with Kankuro, and got a hug and a kiss from Temari. That last one spurred him to a blush as he sputtered out a goodbye and turned to return to Kanoa through the desert. 
Demari smirked at his reaction while Kankuro laughed heartily at the super strong kid getting so flustered. Naruto took off through the dunes to return to Kanoa for his next assignment. Little did he know how important this next one would be to him personally. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.